Hi there, and welcome to the stereoscopic sessions on sfolk.net. These tutorials will be about the basics, camera work, do's and don'ts in stereo, and a lot more. So in this session you will get a basic understanding of how stereoscopic 3D works. After that, I will create an analog with you in Photoshop just to show this stuff on an example. I already have written a text tutorial for After Effects, so I want to use Photoshop this time. It's basically the same. But you'll find a link below if you would like to work with After Effects. After that, I will show you how to create an optimized anaglyph with a trick from 3dtv.at. You know, the guys who also created the stereoscopic player, you should really download and use it, it's a great tool. And after that, I will show you how to use the After Effects plugin written by David Shelton, a friend of mine. He uses the optimized anaglyph algorithm that was developed by Peter Wimmer from 3dtv and is also used in the stereoscopic player. So, if you are under pressure and need a fast solution, just skip the whole tutorial and use the link below. But if you want to understand what's behind it all, you should go the long way. Before we get really started, I want to introduce myself to you. My name is Stefan Vogt and I'm a 3D artist and generalist at the moment, but I want to focus more on texturing and lighting, stereoscopy and a bit of compositing. At the moment I'm a student at the FH Mainz, Germany, a University of Applied Sciences, and my course of studies is called Time-Based Media and I'm going to get a bachelor degree. And I'm also a freelancing artist. Alright, let's get started. First off, you'll need two cameras to do stereo. One for the left and one for the right eye. The illusion of depth is created by presenting the left eye a slightly different image than the right eye. The brain automatically blends these two images into a single view and calculates depth. If you are working on a live action film, the distance between your cameras should be about 65 to 70 millimeters, because this is the average distance between humans' eyes. If you are using this distance, the cameras are mimicking the eyes of an average human, which results into a realistic depth experience. But if you are working in 3D, all this is relative. So with the distance of your eyes you can perceive depth. As you know, you can focus with your iris and by squinting your eyes. These functions are called oculomotorisch in German. I don't know if this term exists in English, maybe oculomotoric or ocular motoric abilities. Anyway. This term summarizes all the motoric abilities of your eyes, with which you can perceive depth. These abilities can give you depth information up to a distance of 6 meters. Everything that is behind 6 meters has infinite depth for your eyes. They can tell in which depth relation a house and a tree are that are more than 6 meters away from you. But still you can tell how far these two are away from each other. But you only know this because you have learned how to handle these information. And therefore you can estimate the depth or the distance between the house and the tree. Your brain calculates shadow, perspective, relative size and everything to give you information about depth. So after 6 meters it's your brain that's working and not your eyes. You can also estimate depth by moving your head from left to right because of the motion parallax. But enough of depth. In stereoscopic 3D we have three thought planes to work with. Zero, near and far plane. Zero plane marks everything that appears to be on the cinema screen or silver screen. Everything that is between zero and near plane appears to come out of the screen. And everything that is between zero plane and far plane appears to be behind the screen. Speaking in terms of parallax, the zero plane is called zero parallax because the left eye sees the same as the right eye in this specific area. So there is no parallax, therefore zero parallax. The near plane is also called negative parallax because the image presented to the left eye is further right than the image presented to the right eye, which results into squinting, a negative movement of your eyes. And everything that ranges up to the far plane is also called positive parallax. There is also a term called divergent parallax, which is like squinting outward, but it is very unpleasant for the eyes, so I don't want to talk about it. So these three thought planes will help you to avoid discomfort in stereoscopy. In the stereoscopic session number 2, I will show you how to calculate these planes. If you are keeping everything between these planes, you are out of trouble. When you are getting closer to the camera than the near plane indicates, for example, your audience won't be able to focus that object. Let me just show you why with a quick example. I want you to move your finger in front of you. Now focus your finger and move it slowly towards your nose. There will be a point where you can't focus anymore because the finger is too close. This gives you great discomfort, especially when the fingertip is on your nose and you are squinting while trying to focus your finger. You can't get these images together. So you should never get this close to the camera in stereo, 
or your movie will be pain for the audience. Now I want to show you these planes in an image. This is a screenshot from our movie Broken, which I created together with David Shelton and Stefan Weinberg. The zero plane is right here at the broken glass. And when you are taking off your glasses, you'll see that there is no parallax in here. No red and cyan. The left eye sees the same as the right eye. Everything behind that is positive parallax. You can see the shift of red and cyan right here. Red is left and cyan is right. The robot in front is negative parallax and gets out of screen. As you can see, cyan is now on the left side and red is on the right side. This is negative parallax, it's twisted. The zero plane is our turning point, and if you move your head from left to right, you can see how everything twists around that axis. Right here I have a little preview for you. On the left you see a normal image, in the middle it's a normal anaglyph. As you can see the red hurts the eyes pretty badly. On the right you see an optimized anaglyph. Red hurts no more and the colors are merely the same, at least with the glasses on. Your audience will see these pictures only with the glasses on. So it's not important how the colors are with the glasses off. It's only important that they are getting a nice stereo experience when the glasses are on. What I also wanted to say is anaglyph is just one method to give each eye a separate image. There are many other methods like polarization filters, shutter systems, autostereoscopic displays and head mount displays and a lot of stuff more. The only important thing is to give the left eye only the left camera view and the right eye only the right camera view. Other methods may have less color shifts and ghosting, but anaglyph is really cost effective and also pretty important for web applications because all you need are some anaglyph glasses. And anaglyph still has the best color representation as opposed to other gel filter glasses like yellow and purple or color code or red and green. But let's go on and I'll show you why. Alright, here we are in Photoshop. I've got the right view right here and the left view here and we just put the left view on top of our right view. When you're holding shift while doing that, the image automatically gets aligned the right way. So right here we have our right view and here's our left view. And when I turn the left view on and off, you can also perceive depth already. So the quick way is to choose the blending options and just deselect our green and blue channels on our left eye so this is totally red and give the uh, right eye the green and blue channels so you see the all our three channels r g and b are split up into two images the red is represented by our left image and the green and blue channels are represented by our right image. So right now we've got red and cyan, which represents all our RGB colors. So our brain has access to the red, green and blue channel and can mix the colors together. So in the end we have a colored picture again, halfway. So when I'm making both pictures visible, you already have a standard anaglyph. So as you know, anaglyph colors can be pretty disturbing right here in the red areas. But we will fix that with our optimized anaglyph right now. To get the optimized anaglyph, we have to go the long way and use the channel mixer instead of the blending options. So we will just undo everything. Um, I'm just putting this to normal again and our left eye also gets all three channels again. So we're right there where we started. Now we are choosing the channel mixer and by pressing Alt while clicking we get this little symbol and this assigns the effect only to one layer. So if we adjust this this effect only this layer is affected. Alright in the channel mixer we are doing the same thing. We just select the green channel and set it to zero. After that we select the blue channel and also set this to zero. So right now here we have a fully red picture as before. And after that we'll do the same thing for the uh, right view and just put red to zero so now we have cyan. Alright, after that all we have to do is put the left view into the mode difference and we have the anaglyph again. Now to get an optimized anaglyph we will define the red channel not by pure red but by the green and blue values. So right now we are on the red in the red channel. I'll just deselect 
our right view again. And we are not defining the red channel by a pure red, but by 70% green and 30% blue. So we still have red again, but uh, as you can see, the red values, like this cable in here, are turned black. Now when we make our right eye visible again, we have this. So as I said before, red hurts no more, because it's transferred into black. One problem is that the right eye gets the color information of two channels, making the image clearer and brighter. That's why you want to add a little gamma correction on your left eye, so you can equalize the brightness. To do this, just select the levels, um, yeah, I put it this way, and put in a gamma of 1.2 or 1.5, just as you like. I think it pretty depends on the scene you're working with. And by the way, our eyes are more sensitive to brightness distinction than to different colors. And of course, the color representation doesn't get much better than the standard anaglyph, but the stereoscopic experience improves because there's less retinal revolvery. So there's no headache and the audience can concentrate on your story. Alright, now for Dave's anaglyph plugin. For the beginning, just make sure you've copied the files to the directory suggested in the readme file. After that, you will find the effect right here, under Stereo 3D Optimized Anaglyph. Now you just put this effect on your left eye, and right here you choose your right eye. And you see, you've got really nice anaglyph really quickly, and the right eye don't even have to be visible. Now, if we compare our optimized anaglyph with this filter, we will see a difference like day and night. Or like, yeah, nice and wow. And the main difference is how red is getting calculated. In our version, we simply make everything that's red black, while this algorithm turns everything that is red into a yellowish gray. You can just visit David Shelton's website for a short article about that. Alright, that's the end of session one, and I'll just show you quickly where I've got the knowledge from, because I think it's really important to give credit to the people who shared their knowledge. So first off, thanks to 3 dtv Ad. On this site you can find formulas for different anaglyph calculation methods, and you should also check out the stereoscopic player. After that I want to give thanks to my friend David Shelton who always shares his knowledge with me, and who has created the very useful plugin for After Effects. And if you don't know it already, you can also find a free stereoscopic rig for 3ds Max on his website. Now thanks to you for watching, you can get more information on my website and also download a free camera rig for Cinema 4D in the download section. And if you want to watch the movie where I've got the screenshots from, just follow this link. And if there's anything wrong in my sessions, feel free to correct me with a comment. I would really appreciate that. So long, I wish you good luck for a good stereo.